for me personally, it, it speaks to one of the challenges of our time in a world in need of so much healing, um, with so many issues confronting us in our lives and in the world around us. Where do we find uh, the strength, the energy to keep going? And when you read the Gospels, you see Jesus constantly being uh, engaged and reaching out and called to heal people and confronting the authorities and so on. And you just you wonder, where, where did he get his energy from? What was the source of his strength? And I think there's a, there's a uh, picture, of, a, a snapshot of that in this passage and some others. It goes like this. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, and when they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, well, let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. Here ends the scripture reading this morning. May the church hear what the Spirit is saying to us today in, in, these, in these readings. This is the season of Epiphany, a time of year when we contemplate how God's light broke out in the world in the life and ministry of Jesus of Nazareth. What has come into being in him was life, we read in the Gospel of John. And that life was the light of all people, life breaking into the world in the ministry of Jesus and in his life. This is the season of Epiphany, when we contemplate how God's light continues to break out in the world in our own time, and in our own lives. The light shines in the darkness, it says in John, and the darkness has not overcome it. Sometimes that seems debatable. <laughs> Without doubt, one of the great epiphanies of our time is the understanding that we are part of the living systems of Earth and not separate from them. As the biologist E.O. Wilson puts it, the biosphere does not belong to us. We belong to it. I think all of us know this on some level at this point. We're the first people in human history to see images of our small blue planet home from space. We are aware as never before of the interdependent ecology of living systems and the damage caused by industrial chemicals and human activity. Yet we continue to ravage the planet. E.O. Wilson writes over and over again, uh, kind of a prophet of our time, Human beings are not exempt from the iron law of species interdependency. Biodiversity as a whole forms a shield protecting each of the species that compose it, ourselves included. But what will happen if in addition to the species already extinguished by human activity, 10% of those remaining are taken away, or 50%, or 90%? As more and more species vanish or drop near extinction, the rate of extinction accelerates. <coughs> and as extinction mounts, biodiversity reaches a tipping point at which ecosystems collapse. That realization, he writes, leads to a dilemma that turns out to be one of the great moral questions of all time. When we continue, will we continue to degrade the planet to satisfy our own immediate needs? Or will we find a way to halt the mass extinction for the sake of future generations? Will we continue to degrade, to degrade the planet, satisfy our own immediate needs? Or will we find a way to halt the mass extinction for the sake of future generations? Here is the thing. Even those of us who consider ourselves to be environmentally aware and concerned often struggle to make the changes to our lifestyle and to our society that might halt the destruction. This puzzles me, even about myself. The light shines in the darkness, but we seem to prefer the darkness sometimes. Today's readings 
From Isaiah and Psalm 147 reflect a primitive, we would say, and ancient understanding of God in the universe, where God is pictured as a great cosmic king sitting up top the heavenly spheres encircling the earth, with the earth, of course, at the center of everything. That's where we tend to place ourselves most of the time. 